What's going on with people? It's your boy Junior. And it's your Alexis here. We're back in the studio for another episode of mm-hmm. Living Life Quartet. Mm-hmm. And it's long mm-hmm. overdue. We know. Yeah, that, you forgive us. Time has made. Time <laughs> has made. <Yeah. laughs> but guess what, guys? We're back in the studio with a great future today. Mm-hmm. This episode is going to be featuring Sister Lisa Noel Smith. Uh huh. Lisa Noel Smith and the Brown Listen, I don't know if y'all know Lisa or not. If you don't get to know her, matter of fact, you about to get to know her right now. So I don't think for like no further ado, let's go ahead and check out check out Lisa No Smith right now. Go, hurry up! I- I'll wait for you. I'll be, I'll be here. We wait. Hold on, we be over here. Thank you guys for tuning in today with us for another episode of Living Life Quartet. We're here with Lisa Knowles of Lisa Knowles and the Brown Singers. How are you today? I am well. I'm doing good. That's awesome. So we're here at Deanna Deliverance Anniversary. And as you know, you've probably seen multiple episodes by now. So we're just going to do an interview to try to get to know Sister Lisa Knowles and the Brown Singers. Um, how long have you guys been singing? The Brown Singers have been singing for 43 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been there for 26. Mm-hmm. I started when I was nine years old. Um, but started early 70s. It was three generations, my grandmother, my mother, and then I came a little later. But they've been singing a long time. <laughs> <laughs> right. I can only imagine. You know, I wasn't raised in the quartet industry. I wasn't brought up in it, but my boyfriend was brought up in it. I mean, he's been singing since, what, five, four? Four. So I know what it's like to, you know, hear all the stories about, you know, being a kid and here, hold your part, get your mic, you know, mm-hmm. right here. So um, was there an event or something that happened within the family that was like, you know, guys, we need to get a group or... Actually, the group, our family used to be a part of, uh, used to be called the National Quartet Convention. Mm-hmm. A guy named um, uh, Brother Harris, I think, I can't remember his first name. He's passed away now, God rest his soul. Mm-hmm. But they used to, he used to have a convention, and all the groups from everywhere used to come. Truth mm-hmm. Dads, the Virginia Airs, all back in the day, Williams Brothers, everybody used to be there. And... That you would sing like in chapters, kind of like they do the GMWA now. You go and you represent this chapter. So the Tennessee chapter was not all there, mm-hmm. and they had to sing. Mm-hmm. It was just about five or six of them. Mm-hmm. Then turn around, they sang, and uh-huh. when they got back, their pastor was like, "Okay, y'all went to the convention. What y'all do?" <laughs> and at that time, the rest of them weren't at church that morning. It was only four of them, and so it was my mom and two of her uh, close friends and one of the their church members. They got up and sang. He said, mm-hmm. "You know what? Y'all want to." Call yourself the Brown Singers. Literally, 1976, that's how the group started. Wow, wow, wow. (laughs) That is definitely amazing. Um, So I know I've learned, you know, just from following you on social media, that your grandmother, um, she's, um, you know, went on to to glory now. And, you know, what virtues did she possess as a woman (laughs) that you would like to, you know, influence other female artists and groups to kind of have being that she's a pioneer in this? My grandmother was uh, very traditional. She was uh, all about class. Mm -hmm. She was all about representing. Everything you do, you should be Mm ladylike. It does not matter. Quartet is a very male-dominated genre of music. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes you can get caught up, like me, doing it from an early age. I can sometimes get caught up in the lingo, in the, you know, the, I want to say the mannerisms Mm -hmm. of men. And forget sometimes I'm a girl. Mm Because you you just think, go hard. You know, Mm -hmm. you hear, go hard or go home. So you start going hard and you'd be like, oh, wait a minute, I'm a girl. I got it, you know. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So she was real big on just being classy. Mm -hmm. And one thing she said to me that has stuck with me even now, uh, my whole life up until now, I'm married with a family. She said, it doesn't matter what people say about you. Mm -hmm. If it's bad, just let it be a lie. And so I try to live my life that people can't say anything bad about me. And if you hear something bad about me, I can assure you it's a lie. Hey Amen. That's that's definitely something that we have to continue to teach to, you know, young women like myself and sometimes older women because sometimes when the devil sticks his head out, you know, it's easy for us to, you know, respond out of emotions. And another question that another question that I wanted to ask is, you know, we know that, you know, when your group is up, it's up and sometimes when it's down, it's down. And how would you recommend for, you know, any group, whether it's male or female, to deal with conflict, whether it be inside of the group or with another group? Well, that's a very great question because out of all of the 26 years that I've sang with the Brown Singers, we've never had an argument. Mm -hmm. We've never had a situation that said where somebody said, I quit, I'm leaving, I'm done. You know, Mm -hmm. we just did. We never do that. We all 
we are here for one reason. Mm -hmm. That's to glorify God. Mm -hmm. If it ever gets to the point where we're not glorifying God, it becomes a personal thing for us. I think we wouldn't sing anymore. I know I wouldn't mm -hmm. because I don't have time to sweat my hair out and my clothes and mm -hmm. be away from my family and then be up here with some mess. You know, right, right. that's something I try to avoid. So I try to, um, and for as far as conflict with other groups, I think if people would just tap into what God gave you is for you, mm -hmm. what God gave me is for me. Mm -hmm. Your gift may not be like mine. Mine is not going to be like yours. But I have to learn how to embrace and respect yours. You do the same for me, then we can all live in harmony. Mm -hmm. You know, support one one another and and be loving i mean we're supposed to be lovers one to another mm -hmm. and i think um i think the older generation which me i consider myself now because i've been doing it for so long the upcoming groups coming i want to live the life that i sing about mm -hmm. i want to be an example of of how we should be mm -hmm. and that's just to love one another that's that's completely right you know sometimes you know it may not always be easy when it, you know you're pressing your way with love because nothing is perfect you know sometimes we get in those moments to where you know you've been like you know I've been doing this for so long is it time to stop or are we gonna ever stop you know and I know that you mentioned that you know you are going to be releasing an EP in the summer for mm -hmm. yourself you know going solo as Lisa knows um, Smith Brown Lisa, Lisa knows Smith. Smith Lisa uh -huh. knows Smith I'm a nose yeah. let me let me clear clear that up because we'd be <laughs> like what who where did the brown come from <laughs> right, right. my mother was born a brown at the mm -hmm. time that the brown singer started singing my grandmother was uh, married she had a first marriage and, and they were browns mm -hmm. so that's why he said y'all should call yourself the brown singers because mm -hmm. they was browns mm -hmm. <laughs> and then later on um later way way later my grandmother remarried and then i was born and i was born a nose mm -hmm. so i got brown blood but i'm i was born nose okay and now i'm married and now i'm a smith so we just got a whole bunch <laughs> of names exactly <laughs> i definitely understand that i definitely understand so when those moments come you know what keeps you grounded when you're like i'm tired i just got off of this showcase or this event and now i'm home i'm cooking breakfast i'm you know doing those things to keep my relationship hot you know what what keeps you grounded and focused and keep going the purpose anything that you do in life there should be a purpose mm -hmm. we don't just get up or we shouldn't just get up and just go do stuff mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. like you have i i do what i do because i think that's what god has called me to do i believe mm -hmm. that in my heart that he called me to do music that he called me to do women's empowerment that he called me and if when i feel like i feel like that i'm doing it for personal gratification or for me to be recognized then i don't want to do it anymore because it's not about me mm -hmm. we're all disciples we're learners we're studiers we're teachers one to another and when you get out of the place of ministry if you're in ministry and your stuff is not about ministry Ministry, then you, you shouldn't do it you know what I'm saying so the way that I stay grounded is I understand what I'm doing and who I'm doing it for mm -hmm. I'm I, my charity starts at home with my husband and my children mm -hmm. and then I give myself to the world but I do it in order mm -hmm. I don't do nothing outside of what my husband say mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying I'm married so when husband say okay well you know I need you to put your life down and mm -hmm. come on and we're gonna be a family well we get our monopoly game out and we play you know yes, that's the kind of stuff that keeps you grounded so you understand what you're you're doing and who you're doing it for it's not about me mm -hmm. I never want people to praise me I, I get that all the time people I, no I, I don't even like to say the word fan mm -hmm. I don't have no fans I got friends I have people mm -hmm. supporters who buy our music who come pay money to see us mm -hmm. sing and stuff like that that's people that's that's support yep. whether they want to support you or not right, right your right, enemies right. Not, so a lot of times they pay the, the biggest price to see you mm -hmm. that's what I heard mm -hmm. To come you know. the, and sit in the audience <laughs> and watch you sing. Yeah, they want, exactly. you know, whether they want to or not, they're supporting mm -hmm. what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? At that little show. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa and them, they just up there saying they little event. Right. <laughs> Jimmy's father bring them down here again. Right. <laughs> I know that you said, you know, earlier that, you know, being in the quartet industry, you know, you adapt a lifestyle and, you know, a ways, you know, verbiage and mannerism. You've adapted those things, but those things, you know, are combined you know sometimes people can think that is what makes quartet but in your own definition you know what makes quartet quartet to you to me quartet is about a feel mm -hmm. it's about an experience when you were little when i was little i remember my grandmother turned on the radio and you would hear um the jackson southern airs come on and you'd hear willie neal johnson i remember going to big quartet concerts mm -hmm. my grandmother was a serious willie neal fan mm -hmm. now anybody who knows anything about the keynotes know willie neal was not just a like a great singer mm -hmm. but he I mean, the way he gave it to you, you just couldn't, you know what I'm saying? My grandmother, you have to know her. She would be screaming, well, ah! she just going crazy. That, oh, he's, he's singing, That's you know, like she would be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, 
it, when I reflect on that, I think about the way that the music makes you feel. Mm -hmm. It's traditional gospel music, and it comes from the heart. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, it was what comes from the heart, reaches the heart. Mm -hmm. Man, concerts, people be laid all out on the floor. I never forget seeing Harvey Watkins. He's one of my favorites. He's, he's actually my <laughs> favorite quartet singer. Mm -hmm. um, but I watched him for years, how he interact with the crowd and how he made it relatable, how he made it very personal. And mm -hmm. people could really understand and feel like they were a part of what he was singing about. When he started singing Hallelujah Square, you start thinking about people that you love that passed. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, it won't be no more cripple. It won't be no more sickness. It won't be. You feel that. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't just hear it. You feel it. Mm -hmm. So quartet to me is, is it's, it's a feel good. I hate saying that because it kind of sounds, but mm -hmm. it's a feel good type of music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I definitely understand that. Um, I know that you guys, you know, I don't know if you guys are just tearing the charts to pieces or not because I'm going to play you till you can't play no more. <laughs> I'm going to go and I'm going to click it on Spotify, music, wherever it's at. I'm going to play you guys in the car. You know, whether or not, you know, you guys have a new single or a new album or anything, I'm going to play Lisa Knowles and the Brown Singers or I'm going to play Great Big God, you know. Right. Do you guys have any other upcoming projects, you know, as the Brown Singers or is it just the EP we're looking forward to? Well, we'll the Brown Singers have gotten to a place kind of where we're just... You know, I'm going to tell you something. It's really amazing that we travel as much as we do because we don't do any, like, promoting. Not for real, for real. We kind of try to take advantage of social media, which is a very good platform if you use it correctly. Mm -hmm. um, so we are looking to do a live recording probably next year. Um, probably next year sometime just because the first live recording we did was like 10 years ago and it looks terrible mm -hmm. and we never released it we just realized we looked a mess our hairstyles and everything <laughs> <laughs> so we're looking to probably do that over um and then you know i'm gonna kind of embark on this solo thing i've been doing it anyway for years so i'm gonna uh, just you know we're just gonna keep on doing that and keep on doing we're gonna do this until god says otherwise amen I'm, all right, Mama is here, and she's saying you guys are up next. We got to get dressed. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much for, you know, doing the interview with us. Thank you.
Happy. Did y'all get you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Hi, yeah. But listen, I don't know if y'all enjoyed that. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. It was a fun interview. Uh, I don't know. Let's just talk about it. It was so empowering. Like, I felt like she was pouring it to me directly. So, mm -hmm. I hope you guys got the same thing from it. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And today, the day we recorded this, is actually her birthday. So, we did a redo for her birthday. So, we did. Happy birthday. Well, we did do that. Today her birthday. Oh, today is her birthday. Happy Show birthday to you. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Happy birthday to you. We're, we're going to try to drop this actually the night of. So if it ain't actually the night, y'all. It's going to be the night. Y'all pray for us. <laughs> but we're going to drop it here tonight here. So um, bless you. Uh, God bless you. God keep you as I pray. My heaven smile upon you. And the devil leave me alone. Heal my body. <laughs> Heal my body. 